Hey, Musa here. Let's do this. We're talking about motion graphs. Motion graphs. Graphs in general, I find, give students the heebie-jeebies for some reason. Uh, and I'm not going to even go and try to figure out why. Students want to avoid the interpretation of graphs at all costs. I'm saying this because I need you to not do this. Graphing and physics go hand in hand. You might not have to graph all the time. You might not have to analyze graphs all the time. But it will exist throughout the entire year and any future years of physics that you may potentially take. Please take the time to understand a motion graph. I'm gonna go through a series of videos describing motion graphs dealing with the kinematic problems, but the, un the fundamentals that you're gonna learn from these motion graphs will indeed still exist in future chapters. Stop, pause it, rewind it. Make sure you firmly grasp motion graphs very very important and not just motion graphs but graphs in general so we're now we're gonna be talking about graphs of motion but i'll likely in the future be graphing other things keep this stuff in mind also before i get very far ahead uh because in physics we tend to utilize real life examples and we can kind of in some units picture what's happening or even demonstrate what's happening we for some reason want to assume that a motion graph is a visual representation of what we actually see and it's not necessarily true. You'll know what I mean as I go through some examples, uh, but just keep in mind that the interpretation of the graph itself, the analyzation of the data and understanding the variances like slope and area, that's what's gonna help you understand the actual and interpret what's actually being graphed, not don't just look at the actual graph itself. You'll know what I mean as I, as I bring this up. So before I even talk about the different kinds of motion graphs, I do want to talk about um, two key terms that you will be having to analyze for most graphs, and that's going to be your slope, and that's going to be, and it's also the area underneath the slope. Those two things, slope and area underneath the slope, are very important to analyze when dealing with any graphs in physics. And I will kind of constantly be reminding you of that over these next few uh, lessons. So the first type of motion graph that I want to deal with is going to be a displacement time graph or a position time graph. However you want to go ahead and think of it, uh, and it's going to be a displacement variable on the y-axis and a time variable on the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out here, displacement. I know my penmanship is grand right now. And your units for displacement is common, the meter, and that's going to be on my y-axis here. And then uh, this is going to be time, and I'm going to write this down here so I'm not fudging with my numbers that I'm going to eventually put in, probably, maybe not. I might not put numbers in some of these examples. And, of course, time is in seconds. So we got displacement versus time, uh, my y versus x. I need you to understand that displacement sometimes has the variable x given to it or the variable y given to it or z or other variables. And you might think, oh, x should go on the x-axis, but that's not it. This is the coordinate system x, y axis. The variable x has nothing to do with the actual axis itself, although it, it can. Sometimes we'll use x to describe the motion along the x-axis, right? Um, and let's talk about dependent versus independent variables. Typically speaking, the horizontal axis is the independent variable. That means this variable does not depend on anything. Really, more or less, it means everything else depends on it. So dealing with physics graphs and most science graphs, you typically put time on the independent variable, um, but that's not necessarily always the case. I know some teachers will say time always goes on the X, and that's probably the case 95% of the time, but there will be a few examples later on in the year where you're gonna see that we get to put time on the Y. So the thing that doesn't depend on stuff goes here. So time just moves forward, right? One second, two second, three second. We're not gonna change that, so that stays here. Where the object is does depend on the time. Hence, it's the dependent variable, and that's the y-axis. Another thing I want to bring to your attention, and we don't necessarily refer to this over and over and over and over again, but I will throughout a few of these lessons, so I'm going to leave it up here for a while, uh, and that's our standard linear equation of y equals mx plus b. And just remember a few key things here, m being the slope, uh, y being the intercept, okay? And that's going to come into play as I go through some examples. I'm going to try to connect this equation to the graph. But I won't always. I'm just going to leave it here for now just to make things simple. So I don't know. Maybe I should just kind of toss down an example here. So let's say I've got a, you know, I'm not even going to describe. I'm not even going to put numbers here. I'm just going to show you. So I'm going to place 
a line. And I'm going to go ahead and say that it has this slope. This is the graph. Okay, this is my motion graph of the thing. And you're looking at this, not having any idea of what motion graphs are, and you might be saying to yourself, I don't know what I'm seeing here. There's nothing there. There are no numbers. There's no description. How can I make anything out of this? And that's the whole point. I don't want to put numbers in here. I don't even want to explain to you what this scenario is. I want to show you how you can actually get a lot of useful information out of just this right now. Okay. And so let's look at it here. And like I said, there are two things we often analyze. And for displacement time graph, there's really only one. And so for displacement time graph, often referred to as position time graph. So we're either going to say P versus T or D versus T. T, a PT or a DT graph. Uh, these guys, you know, position or displacement, that's why I wrote it both down. Uh, the thing that we really need to look at is slope. What is the slope representing? Now, I don't mean numerically. I mean, like, literally, what variable does this slope represent? And so for that, we need to dip back into our basic math, and we need to say, well, what is the slope of any graph? And the slope of any graph, whether it's the displacement time graph or not, will always equal, think about it, the rise over the run. Uh, and more appropriately, in terms of mathematical graphing skills, your rise, your upper value, is your change in your y variable. Over your run, your change in your x variable. So it's actually delta y over delta x. This is the math version. The physics version, we're going to take, well, whatever physical variable is on the y-axis, we're going to place that on top. And what physical variable is on the x-axis? Well, look at it. The y-axis is displacement. So I'm going to say change in not y, but change in d. And the x uh, is going to be time. So we're going to say change in time. So for this particular displacement time, or for any displacement time graph, the slope will always be your change in d over your change in t. Now think about that. That should ring a bell in your brain. You should be able to remember what that is. Yeah, you perhaps might remember that change in distance over time is actually average velocity. Yes, the slope of a distance time graph or position time graph or displacement time graph, whatever helps, is indeed the velocity. Hmm, think about it. That means, and I'm going to write this in here. You don't need to write this in. This isn't something that we would normally look for, uh, but I'm going to put it here just so we don't forget. The slope of this graph represents the velocity. So we should be able to figure out more stuff. Let me erase some of this stuff so I can have some more writing room while you think about what you can know in terms of this given problem. Okay. Velocity time graph or not velocity time, a distance time graph, slope being velocity. What do you know about this slope? In this example, what do we know about this slope? Well, it's a straight line. And what does a, a slope of straight line represent to you? A value that's not changing. So in this example, for this displacement time graph, we know that the velocity is constant. If the velocity is constant, that means the velocity is not changing, which also tells us this object is not accelerating. Acceleration, therefore, is zero. Again, there were no numbers here. I didn't tell you this ahead of time. You can just look at this and say, okay, straight line, display some time graph, constant velocity, acceleration is zero. Cool. We should also be able to remember a few other tidbits in terms of our fundamental understanding of graphs. For example, is this slope positive or negative? Yeah, hopefully you remember. In this case, it's positive. And if it's positive and it represents velocity, that means the velocity is positive. Which means the object is traveling in the forward direction. And whether that, that forward might mean east, it might mean up, it might literally mean forward, okay? But you know it, it is here. We do have positive velocity. Cool. Hmm. I think that's pretty good for now. Um, let me drop down another one on top of this. 
Now, let me erase this and give a few other examples as we go along. And so we can go through a non-mathematical approach on identifying this stuff right here. Let me erase this board. One second. Actually, you know what? Just as I was reaching for my cloth to wipe it down, I do want to point out this thing here. Do you see how I started this graph? This plot not at the origin. It's not at zero. This y-intercept means something. And remember, in this example, the y is the displacement. Uh, let's go back to this equation here. Y, bam, right here. This means that whatever this object was, began, uh, we began collecting data at a non-zero starting position. So we would actually say in this example, the initial x value, the initial x value is uh, not actually zero. Okay, so if the object started, if I were to do a position timeline, zero, one, two, three, four, all the way down, I'm just tossing random numbers in here. The object started here, then I would plot it at zero. But in this case, the object started at a non-zero spot. That's why it was up here. Okay, let me erase this board and let's go through a couple other examples. Ooh, I erased my time. I want to keep that there, don't I? My actual graph is starting to erase away too. Oh well. Okay, so put time back down there at the bottom. Let's look at a different example. Eh, let's not use ruler. Let's go here. Let's start here and do something like this. Hmm, what does this mean? Interesting. First of all, I'm proud of myself making that nice curve like that. I don't usually do that. It gets all eh, whatever. Uh, okay, so remember, motion graph, displacement time, slope means what? Yes, slope means velocity. What can you tell me about the slope? In this example, is the slope still constant? Nope, it's not, is it? It's not a straight line. And here, the slope is changing. Now, something I want to bring to your attention here, and it's this concept of instantaneous velocity. So the slope of this graph represents the velocity. We see that this velocity is changing, which means we know that in any given moment in time, the velocity will be different than any other moment in time, or at least on average. So, whilst we can't quantify right now without using some decent math skills, so just conceptually we can't quantify the velocity anymore, we can still get an idea of whether or not this object is increasing or decreasing in speed throughout time. And there's this term that we want to look at called a tangent line. And you may recall from math, and I'm going to draw one and then I'm going to erase it, or not erase it, I'll just leave it there and then I'll just use my ruler. Uh, you may recall in math, a tangent line is any line that touches a curve, but only touches at one point. So it won't bisect that line, it'll only touch at one single point. So if I took my ruler and I placed it like here, this ruler is touching two points, that is not a tangent line. But if I take this ruler and I touch just one single point, that is a tangent line. So if I were to try to draw a tangent spot uh, at that spot right here, that's that black line right there. Uh, at that instant, the slope is a moderate value. But if you were to look later on, the spot tangent to that uh, curve right here, that slope is indeed steeper. And if you were to look early on, that slope is pretty shallow. And so if I were to take that ruler and move it along that curve tangent to that curve, you will see that I'm hitting the border of my board, but also you will see that that ruler is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. So that should indicate to you that the velocity is increasing, which means if the velocity is increasing in the forward sense, that means the acceleration acting on this must be non-zero, right? Changing slope, slope represents velocity, changing velocity must be an acceleration. And that acceleration is indeed positive because the velocity is also getting more positive. So here we have a positive A, which is causing our velocity to increase. Cool, right? And again, you can tell by just looking at the tangent line. Early on, we had no slope at all. So what was my initial starting velocity of this object? Big zero. But we had a nice constant acceleration acting on it. Bam. Now. Uh, Non-constant accelerations are very rare in physics. Uh, let me just quickly try to show you what it may look like. Uh, that would be a scenario in which my line is disappearing. Oh well. Um, it would be a scenario in which 
V. Uh, curve will be a non-consistent curve. So maybe it starts off as a nice curve, and then it starts to change, and then it curves again. And we're not going to quantify this, at least not in these early physics classes, uh, but you will indeed be able to tell that the A has to be changing because we don't have a nice consistent curve the whole way up. So here, the acceleration starts to shift. And in fact, we can look at it, we can say there's positive acceleration here, and then here, the object start off with a nice high speed, right? And then I get that tangent, and that, that velocity is starting to decrease, 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 and then bam, uh, we're actually at zero. You see how my slope at the top is horizontal? That means there's zero velocity here. So that's interesting, right? Right there, uh, V is zero. And right here, at the peak of this curve, the velocity is also zero. Uh, here, the V is very large. Uh, here we have zero, here we have zero, okay. And all has to do uh, with the fact that there's a changing acceleration because now after that zero spot, that velocity is starting to decrease quite quite a bit actually, right? It's negative velocity now. Well, it decreases and goes more negative, so it's actually increasing in magnitude in the negative direction, right? And then it's, oh, now it's starting to slow down Getting back to zero velocity, uh, the slope throughout this graph. You're not going to quantify it, but you should be able to point out those areas. Let's give a few more, and then we're going to wrap this one up. We're going to talk about, uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about velocity time graphs, which will look very similar, but mean completely different things. Hence, you can't just look at it. You actually have to interpret what you're looking at. Uh, what is this guy representing? Let's see. Let's start up here. Let's take a look at this guy. So this here is an object that starts in some initial positive displacement. So we're starting in the positive spot away from zero. It is going to approach zero throughout time. So it's going to be heading back towards the zero spot. And then once it gets here, it's going to keep going backwards further away from the zero spot. So if I were to uh, maybe put a displacement kind of position line down here. I'll use a ruler for that. Uh, and I'll call this the zero spot. Maybe up here, uh, this person started here, right? And then we see at this moment in time, we're at, at the zero position. So this person started, be going, started to go backwards, right? And then when they get back to the zero spot, they're now in the negative portion of this graph, uh, and maybe finishing somewhere over here. I'm not. I'm trying not to put numbers in. Uh, they finished in the negative region of the graph. I hope you, you remember that this is the positive region of the graph, and this is the negative region of the graph. That's back back in your math classes. I hope you're recalling some of these math skills that you are supposed to have retained forever, right? Uh, and uh, so, what does that mean if a dude starts in a positive spot or dude? I'm sorry, I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, if the dude slash dudette starts in a positive position and starts to go back to the negative position, shouldn't it imply that they are experiencing a negative velocity? Yeah, they are. So wait, this doesn't work for this. I should erase that a while ago. It, hopefully you didn't write that down. That was all carryover from the last example, right? So in this example, uh, the A is zero. Why do I know that acceleration is zero? Is the object accelerating? No, because we have a non-changing slope. So we have V is constant. And we also know that V must be negative. Cool. Uh, I hope you're understanding this. I hope you're getting this. It's very, very important to really be able to interpret motion graphs. I'm going to go through an example worksheet where I kind of give a few other uh, clear examples on this using actual numbers and, you know, real life scenarios. Um, and there, there's all sorts of others. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. We've got this kind of curve. Uh, starts off with a zero, but now is approaching a negative high velocity. So down here, we have negative high velocity. Here we have uh, zero velocity, and then somewhere in here is a negative moderate velocity, which means we do have a constant acceleration acting on it. Um, I don't know. You'll probably see many, many more. So stop. Don't just memorize these. Just think about how to interpret it. Okay. I think that's going to be a good, uh, good time to wrap up this video. Next video, we're going to be talking about the velocity time graphs.